During this episode of Cars Plus, we're going to cover the various interior materials on 1930s and 1940s automobiles. Now while we're going to use a 1939 Graham combination coupe that we've got mostly complete, the general materials, what they're called, are going to be covered in this video and they'll fit any of these cars, 30s to 1940s. When we open the door of the car, we can show you a number of the materials right here on this particular door panel. Here, your main cloth in the 30s and 40s will most likely be a Bedford cord, or it will be a broadcloth. It could still be mohair, and sometimes it's going to be leather. That type of material, those four, would be used on things such as the armrest, the door panel itself, as well as the seats in the automobile. But that is not the only thing that would be used. As you notice in the gram here on the bottom of the door we have carpet. This will not always be on the bottom of the door. It will depend on whether or not it is a fancy version, what is often sometimes called deluxe. But other times deluxe means it's not the fanciest version. But in many cars they'll have carpet on the bottom of the door. And by this time, we're not using a square weave carpet. In the 20s, they would have used a square weave. Now we use a carpet more like what we're used to. This type of carpet often is referred to as Wilton carpet, but it may have other names, but it's more like a modern carpet. Along the edge of the carpet, we have the next thing that people need to know about. This is the part called binding. Binding is used around edges of carpet, and it is used to transition in various areas in the car. In particular, you'll also find binding often used on your sun visors. Here you can see binding is also used on the sun visor. Now for reference, both the door panels and sun visors have a cardboard-like material called panel board in it. It's basically a waterproof form of a cardboard. That would be what they did in the 1930s. The other fabric we're seeing when we're looking here at the sun visor, as well as a headliner up above. This is napped cotton. Now you'll notice when we look at the various materials is that there's slight shade differences in everything or complete shade differences. That's because different materials, the dyes are going to act different and different companies will have made the different materials even in the 1930s. As a consequence, you have to have what we refer to as a colorway, which would be various colors in the various fabrics and materials that look like they go together because it's highly unlikely that they would match 100% of the time. From the carpet, to the door panels, to the seats, to the headliner, you see there are different shades going on. So napped cotton would be used on your sun visors and headliner normally in the 30s and 40s. In the 1930s, kick panels are often not carpeted. This is usually the highline version of the car. This particular gram is called a custom supercharger. It has a custom interior which gives you carpeted kick panels. You'll also notice that on the edge of the kick panels, we've got that binding again to seal the edge of the carpet. And you'll notice that the binding color is not the same as the carpet colors. We're telling you you have to work in a color way in order to get things to harmonize. That's what they did in the 30s and 40s. That's not just Graham, it's the other car manufacturers also. Right here we have another piece. Many people do not know what this is called in the modern day. This is called a wind lace. A wind lace is another trim piece, but it's actually here and it's got a foam core. The idea is it seals out drafts and noise in the door so you don't hear whistles when you're driving down the road from air coming in and out of the door area. That's what the wind lace is for. As you come up to the top here and you look at the wind lace, you'll see there's another piece above the wind lace. The piece above the wind lace is called wire-on. Wire-on folds over. When it comes, it comes flat. It's got wire built into it, woven right into it, and it is for the purpose of hiding the tacks that hold both the wind lace and the wire-on. And once you've tacked that all together, you fold your wire-on up and over, and you end up with these two pieces 
of trim in the car. Again, very normal in the 30s and 40s to have wire on and wind lace. Now, when you have wire on and wind lace, they're always found in matching colors because these two pieces would be made by the same manufacturer. So you would not have one color of wind lace and a different color wire on. You always make sure that those two match. As you notice, when we showed you all the various fabrics in this car, they're in what we call, again, a colorway, meaning that they are similar in shades and look like they go together, but because a different manufacturer would have made that carpet, a different one made the cloth on the seats and doors, and a different one would have made the binding, and the wind lace and wire on might be a different company again. All of them, even if they were using the same approximate shade, would end up with different colors. In this case, just so you know, the color we are utilizing on the seats here and the color in the carpet are both referred to as top. And you'll notice or hope that they are still quite different. The wind lace has a different color name. Offhand, I don't remember it. But nonetheless, you notice that the various products go together to create a colorway that looks appropriate for the car. And those are the basics of having fabric and interior materials in 30s and 40s automobiles. Thanks for watching this episode of Cars Plus. You will find below in the description that we have a list of some possible sources for the various products that we have mentioned that are used in 1930s and 40s cars. It's not necessarily exhaustive, but gives you a place to start when you're working on your car's interior.